Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining us on this video. Today we're talking about making an image clickable. Imagine taking a predefined image, let's say a floor plan or a seating chart, and inserting that into FileMaker and have that be clickable. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. And I've got a special guest today. Her name is Robin. She works here at Productive Computing, and she's doing this particular demonstration on behalf of a customer request. What you'll see here in a minute is we'll take Claris FileMaker and we will insert an image into a container field that will then become capable within a web viewer and clickable with predefined plot points. The user simply makes plot points on the existing graphic and like magic, it comes to life with colors, the ability to add, edit, and delete records, card windows, you name it, pretty much anything you can do in FileMaker is available by way of clicking this dynamic image inserted from something predefined. So without further ado, let's have Robin take us on this journey and show us what this demonstration is like. And I'll be there to ask a few questions along the way. So thanks for letting me show this. Um, a client came to us with a specific problem and uh, the gears started working in my head and I came up with this and I'm really excited about it because I think it's a great showcase for some of the new features in FileMaker 19. So it's really important, I think, to start the conversation by like praising the layout options that FileMaker has given us from the start. I mean, it's always been a really powerful tool to build these sort of visual guides to working with your data. You know, a lot of us just think about like, you know, throwing you know, fields and labels on a form, but you know, you can with fairly little experience be able to build something that sort of represents your data. But if you're not comfortable in layout mode, it takes time and energy to make that layout. So like, what if your specific workflow requires the data be mapped to a location? For example, let's say you have a local chain of restaurants and each location has its own dining room layout and you have this, you know, a hostess application or something where they can mark, they can say what, you know, what tables have been reserved or, you know, what tables have been seated or where the drink orders are going in. But as your businesses grow and you add more restaurants to your chain, you have to create a new layout for each restaurant. And that's kind of a best case scenario. What if you're, for example, an event planning company that specializes in coordinating convention space for exhibit halls, and each booth is going to be rented out, and at the beginning of the convention, those booths need to be set up, and so you kind of need to be able to track where they are in that process. You know, each convention space might have a completely different layout, and so if you have this prospect of every single time you book a convention, you got to go in and make a, a custom layout to track those booths, then it starts to become a bit of a time sink for you, and and you know the question of like how how well are you using your time and how wisely are you using time, um, especially considering you know that's the sort of thing that that should be data driven, that should be the sort of thing that that talks to your data, and you don't have to worry too much about like going in and, and customizing, you know, each and every convention to your your bespoke <laughs> layout that you've come up with. So using the new JavaScript tools in FileMaker, you can use the web viewer to display an image stored in a container field, and then use JavaScript and CSS to create a series of element overlays on that image that would then be responsive in FileMaker, which is completely new to us. So what I have here is that this is a little thing that I worked up. And the idea here is that let's say that we're running a convention. I have DevCon 2019 that I'm going to just go ahead and insert a picture for the floor plan that, yes, I did build in paint, nice. <laughs> in MS Paint. <laughs> um, so this floor plan here, I'm going to go ahead and click on this setup clickable areas here. And what this is going to do is it's going to take me to a web viewer that is created it's it's basically static html it's got uh, html some css and it's using a base64 to encode that image into the html of the web page but more than that i've got a series of on click actions so what's going to happen is i'm going to click on the upper left boundary of an area and then a lower right boundary and if memory serves us right that was geist at 2019 so it's going to ask for that name of that area and you're going to hit okay and what it's going to do is it's going to create this visual overlay. And the nice thing about it is that what's happening here is it's using the FileMaker perform script function in JavaScript to call the script that is then asking for the name. That's a regular FileMaker dialog. They are saying, what's the name? And so the, but the dialog is then creating a record in another table. That's the booths table, basically. Right. And then when it's done, it's passing back to the JavaScript, it's it's running the perform JavaScript and web viewer script step after that. And so it's just, yeah, it's passing that instruction back and forth between FileMaker 
and the web viewer is JavaScript, and they're actually able to really talk to each other quite seamlessly without having to do any kind of reloading or any kind of FMP URL tricks that we might have you know, had to do to get that to work in previous versions, if we could at all. Right, I don't even recall that the screen blinked at all. No, no, because it's not reloading. It's it's literally the JavaScript is getting this instruction saying, create an overlay for these boundaries uh, and color it green. <laughs> right. And, you know, and that's what it's doing. So um, let's go ahead and do another one. So this was our booth, I believe. So we're going to go ahead and click in the upper left. And um, I'm going to click way outside here. I'm going to click down here. So it's going to say name this area. And I'm going to say, okay, so that was productive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to misspell our name. Okay. Computing. And so there we go. This is, oh, whoops, that, I, I did that wrong. So I'm going right. to click on it. And it's going to, um, it's going to put on the wrong screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's going to say, uh, do you want to delete this block? And I'm going to say, okay. And okay. now it's gone. Now what's going on here is, let me go ahead and see if I can resize my screen a little bit is that what's going on here is that it's literally just creating and deleting records in this other table here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again with this table kind of up in the background. Sure. And I'm gonna go click and I'm gonna click properly here in the lower right. And I'm gonna go pro dot deleting and still <laughs> mistype there. Uh, and I'm gonna click okay. And as you can see, it just popped that one right back into there. Nice. So, you know, you can set these up you know, all day long. Now imagine, you know, handing this to somebody, handing this to an administrative assistant or somebody and just saying, hey, just, you know, take 15 minutes to set these up. Here they go. Versus, you know, one, two, five hours setting up a series of popovers on this. Right, right. And if you clicked on that, you got the option to delete. You could Correct. also present the option to edit. Right, because it's, it's a FileMaker script. So, you right. know, the sky's the limit. It could just bring that up and you could say, oh, you know, like for example, here you can see I, I kind of missed the the border just a little bit. You know, I could tighten that up. I could I could shave a couple of uh, of uh, pixels off the Y there, sure. <laughs> and um, you know, and it would it would work fine. So um, the nice thing here, you can see that the scrolls and the blocks are following with the map. So it's not something where you know the map is sliding out from under the blocks or anything like that because we're using CSS and the CSS is really smart about it. So your image became a web page, essentially. Exactly. And you weaved in records from FileMaker right. by selecting that. Now, the same could hold true if you, if you wanted to and you programmed it as such. You could have that same data entry person create a new record on the screen on the right, put in the name, and you could, let's assume that the screen on the left had sort of a grid matrix where it had right. you know A through Z and 1 through 24. And it was calibrated such a way that the data entry person could simply put what are the coordinates, yes. um, you know, A24.2, and just like magic, it would draw for them. And you sunk my battleship. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, that's exactly it. Because, yeah, if you have, if this is a very kind of structured solution, then you could use calculations based on, you know, expected size, expected grid to then put that data in manually. But what really makes this cool is that these don't necessarily have to be visual in order for you to interact with them. So now the next section we go back to here is what I call the end user interface. So it's the day of the convention, the Exhibus Hall is getting set up and you gotta do two things in order. First of all, you gotta get the power and network down. And then the second thing you gotta do is you gotta get the booth set up. So those are the two things that every booth needs based on you know this layout. Now you hand your foreman, you hand the guy in charge an iPad, and on the iPad, he is looking at this screen, and he can see where all of the booths are, and so he says, okay, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to set up booth 1A, and when he clicks on this, he now gets this little guy here, and the first thing he does is he says, all right, uh, I'm going to click on this. I've, I've set up the power and internet, so he's going to go ahead and click that, and he's going to click done, and now this is going to light up blue to say, hey, we've got the power and internet there, so now they know without having to really look at the data or anything where each item is. Um, productive computing, because we're awesome, they gave us the power in the internet and they gave us the booth here. Uh, and when they're done, we go purple because we have both steps done. Um, nice. If they come back to Geist and they say, oh wait, no, we didn't do the power in the internet, something's wrong, so we gotta do that over. You know, They can uncheck that, they hit done, 
and it goes back to being clear. And the nice thing is that these are just these are just overlays that all we're doing is telling JavaScript to change the color once you're done with that FileMaker card window that brings up. So right, and that color is based on CSS. Correct. So what we have here is I have my little code guy here. So there's three pieces of code that I've just stuck in global variables or global fields rather, and uh, I suck them in when I'm building that HTML. So we've got some CSS. You have the body, which is here. We have a uh, setup bounds. This is the green setting up um, screen. When we go, you know, we click in the upper left and we click in the lower right. This is the green thing that basically says, you know, just make it green, give it a you know, given an opacity of 0.5 allows it to be slightly translucent so it doesn't completely cover your map, which is right. really nice. That's a cool um, feature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Which I mean, FileMaker has the same thing. Sure. So, and then uh, we have status zero, which is you haven't touched it. That's the one where it's just, it's clear and there's, there's nothing going on. Um, status one, which is the power and electric has been turned on. So that means that it's got this kind of nice blue shade. And then status two is the same thing. It's just a nice purple shade. And all we're doing with that JavaScript, um, so when we click that button, this is all of the JavaScript that is running on that page for the end user, which is basically saying we're going to create the blocks when the, the screen is loaded up. And then the only other thing is we run is after FileMaker is done with that card window, it calls the update block class script or function rather from the script and it passes in the ID, which is just bounced back and forth. And then the status basically saying, you know, what color do we want it to be? So the first thing we do is we just strip out any statuses that are on there currently. And then we add the one that it was, it was given. And that's all there is to it for that user end of JavaScript. So it's not even that much JavaScript. It's just that powerful. Nice. And you it works it. well. It works well. It's smooth. And if you had the time and the ambition, any developer could come in and say, well, I want my colors to be based on a preference. And you could pick a pull down to say, okay, this purple yeah. means this and blue means that. And you could exactly. totally define that ahead of time and have that woven in. Right. You could have 50 different statuses. The, the status calculation is just a FileMaker variable calculation that's saying, um, so let's go ahead and break up the... Uh, the script viewer here, and let's go to view block. So view block, when we clicked on it and it brought up that FileMaker window, all it's doing is saying, bring up a window, bring up the card window, go to the view block, find the record for the booth that we had passed in as an ID, and then pause the script. And then when the script is paused, close the window and then we'll calculate the status. And the status is basically just, you know, did we check box one? Did we check box two? <laughs> And then it passes that back. And then, then it's just performed this JavaScript in the web viewer. And that uses two parameters, which is basically just what is the layout object name for the web viewer in question? Is it the, the setup viewer or is it the end user viewer? And I just pass that in a script parameter. And then the status, which is we just calculated based on what was checked off. And then JavaScript knows what to do with that. So Nice. Excellent. Now, this requires FileMaker 19 or above. It does. Yep. Right. And there are a couple of limitations to it. One thing is, obviously, you have to turn on the allow the web viewer to perform JavaScript checkbox in the web viewer, which is new. And the first time I wasn't getting it to work, and I was like, ah, and then I realized, oh, I, had, I didn't check that off. Right. <laughs> So that might get you. And then the other thing is that, you know, it is because it's CSS and it's just these div objects are a little bit limited in what they can do. So it, they tend to be pretty much you get blocks. Now, it is possible to rotate a block with CSS, but getting it to then line up exactly where you want it to be can be a little bit tricky. With enough time and elbow grease, I could probably have gotten some kind of widget in there for, you know, click and hold and rotate it. But, you know, as far as just clicking on blocks on the screen, and again, like the block doesn't have to encompass the entire thing. So if you had like a circular table, you could circumscribe mm -hmm. the, cir the circle right. and make sure that, you know, you have a block in there that is clickable, even if the whole circle or maybe more than the circle is, is clickable. But right. you can't create like a circular element <laughs> as far as I know. And it's conceivable, but that once an area is defined, that you could have more than just a block. You could actually introduce a graphic representing a tiny button, which is calibrated just so, so that it's 10 pixels right, 10 pixels low. 
yeah. that button could actually define further functionality that said edit or delete. Yes. You could actually introduce graphics because again, it's the web, sky's right. the limit, but only if the area was defined. Right. So it's interesting. And you could also define the area with perhaps just instead of a blocked out graphic, perhaps just an outline. Yes. Yeah, you could. So for example, we could actually do that right now. So if we said for this one, we've got this one PX solid, let's make it four PX and four pixels wide and just like really red. That's red. And we're going to get rid of this background color here. And if we go back to, I'm living dangerously. If we go you back are. to the cl clickable areas, there you go. Yeah. It's just got this nice red outline, you know, without having any any color in it. So you can do a lot of really great things with this on the fly between knowing, you know, a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of CSS. It's very powerful. Yeah, I'll say. And have you found any cross-platform issues? A lot of developers sometimes complain that the web viewer in these kinds of situations works a little differently on Windows than it does on Mac. Have you experienced any of that? Well, JavaScript is supposed to be completely platform independent. Now, I have noticed, because um, one of the things that we were was very important for this proof of concept was the ability for it to work on the iPad. One thing I did notice was that the iOS JavaScript kit does have some difficulty with the on layout load or on body load function, which is what we use to draw the existing blocks over the picture when we load the layout. That can be gotten around, however, if you use a set timeout function. And so basically what I do is I don't wait until the body loads. I just basically say, give it a second and then draw a bunch of stuff over it. Okay, right, um, force feed it. Right, and since this is local, since you don't have to worry about this reaching out to the web and you know latency or anything like that, you don't really have to worry about it taking that long. I, lit I think I have it at a quarter of a second and it draws. And frankly, I don't even know that it would necessarily need to wait for the image to draw if the image was particularly complex, so. Right, and this is stored in a record like any other record. So yeah. you can capture it and then share it on the network and so forth. Exactly, yeah. Now, so this could be a huge tool and one that really has no limitations in terms of creativity yeah. and expandability. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's it was dead simple. You know, once I got the tools in place, it, it just kind of fell all into place. And especially because the things that would have taken me a really long time to program in JavaScript, I could hand over to FileMaker, and the things that would take me a really long time to program in FileMaker, I handed off to JavaScript. So, I mean, it's yeah, sort it of a match made in heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds like that, as so many things are with FileMaker. Yeah, it's great. This has been terrific. Well, I just want to say this is a great tool, and thanks for showing us. Yeah, you're welcome. And you know, custom dev would be happy to help solve anybody's problems. If you're having a if you're having a FileMaker problem that needs a creative solution, uh, come and come and see me and my team. <laughs> we, will, we will get you taken care of. Excellent. Well, thanks, Robin. It's rewarding for me as the owner of the business to be able to see creative solutions like this on behalf of our customers and then bring that to the community for us all to potentially benefit from. If this is something you're looking to do in your business, we would certainly love to help. In the meantime, feel free to subscribe to our channel if you like this content, and you'll find more information about our company down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.